you know, not what you feel. See, I knew in my heart that I could do more, but I felt in my mind that I didn't have what it took. I wasn't smart enough. I didn't have a college education. I didn't have enough money. I didn't have the right contacts, but I felt in my heart I could do more. What was stopping me? The willingness to do what I knew. So I decided to learn. What is it about you that's different than your friends? That you decided, I know I can do more than what I'm doing. I know I can have more. Because the this place where we are right now, what we're experiencing, this, this is not normal. This is different. My business partner trying to discourage me. Oh, don't don't go on now. You were on last week. I woke up with anxiety this morning. Not last week, this morning. I'm the motivator. If I woke up with anxiety and I'm here trying to find what should I be taking, all the other stuff y'all telling me, there's some other folk out here dealing with that too. Somebody could hear what I say, it would mean something to them that will help them to get on the other side of what they're dealing with. And I want to get something out of this too. I'm human. And I don't even know why I was feeling anxious and, and feeling anxiety. Oh, I know. Oh, be anxious for nothing. Easier said than done. I think that what allowed me to become the kind of person that I am as a speaker yeah. is because of my experience, because of my journey. And we all have journeys. And I think that the journey that you have, it has a great deal of impact on how you show up in life. And so I, I like a quote by Booker T. Washington who said, judge a man not by what he has accomplished, but what had he had to overcome that I've been through, being born in an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother in the poor section of the United States, I'm being labeled educable, mentally retarded, and put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, and fail again in the eighth grade, and being adopted, and no college training. I think that all of those things that one would think I would become a statistic. And as opposed to doing that, I've been able to position my life to influence and motivate and inspire millions of people around the world. David and Goliath, he had five stones, but he only used one. And I think that was the stone of determination, the stone of faith, the stone of perseverance. When you think about where things are there, yeah, there's several things that come up for me here that we have a similar situation right here in the United States. You know, we're dealing with police departments who, for the for the most part, they 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 are serving people. They 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 serve and protect the dominant culture, but people of color they terrorize and murder. It's a whole different thing. I read something by Dr. Norman Cousins. He wrote a book called The Biology of Hope. And he talked about the fact that when something happens to you, you don't deny it, you defy it. And I was defiant that I'm going to beat this, I'm going to handle this. That there are people who many times when something happens to them, that they embrace it from a place of fear and it takes them out. And Elsie Robinson said, things may happen to you and things may happen around you, but the most important things are the things that happen in you. And you have to stand up inside yourself and deal with it and handle it. So fortunately, that never bothered me, but I had sciatica pain for hours. I lost a lot of sleep. It was exhausting going from all types of specialists in and out of the country. And just one day, it stopped. And I'm glad that I'm past that, you know. I just, I, I feel like uh, when, you, when you go through some stuff, you just, there's some certain things that you don't want ever to see again, and that's what I don't want to ever see again. But fear has not been the biggest challenge that I've faced with the things that I've been dealing with in terms of my health.
I want you to look at something right now. Think of some major goal you want, or maybe it's one you're already working on, and you have experienced a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. You've experienced a lot of disappointment. Maybe you've already given up. And maybe you just need a little fire, a little encouragement to get back in the game again. Here's what I want you to look at. There are winners, there are losers, and there are people who have not discovered how to win. And all they need is some coaching. All they need is some help and assistance, just a little support. All they need is some insight or a different strategy or plan of action to make some adjustments that will open up the key to a whole new future for them, that will give them access to the unlimited power that they have within themselves. That's all that they need. So what I want you to do is, is think about something you want for you, that's real for you, that's important for you, that will give your life some special meaning and power. And I don't even want you to say, I can do that. I don't want you to assume that. See, five years ago, when I started out in this area, I would not have been able to make the mental leap that I would be up to where I am right now. I don't want you to begin to just psych yourself out. No, no. I want you to be able to say something to yourself that will enable you to maintain a level of integrity with yourself. That when you say this, even when you face tremendous setbacks, it, it will be a benchmark to keep you in the game, to keep you moving forward and experimenting and readjusting your strategy and your plan of action continuously looking for ways to win. When you look at the title, you're bigger than your challenges. Elsie Robinson said something. He said, things may happen around you and things may happen to you. But the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. Yes. And, and I believe that you're never too old to learn and you're never too young to teach. And that's why I admire you and that's why I have no qualms about asking you to mentor me in this next chapter of my life because I'm not through yet and there's much more for me to do. And I was talking to you about your model, uh -huh. going our, from our competing, his, his business model, competing with dollar store all the way up to thousands of dollars. And that is so brilliant. The, yeah. One of the things when I read the book, Alvin Toffler, Future Shock, mm -hmm. and he talked about the fact that when we go from a domestic economy to a global economy, an education economy, the things are going to change and, and it will be a time where people have to think and have to be creative mm -hmm. and find ways to do what they do in a far more effective way, do more and do it faster and with less resources and manpower. You have mastered that and you're teaching others how to do it. We learn, we earn, and we pass it on. And that's what I admire about you, that you're passing it on. It's not just about you, but you're building a legacy and empowering people who will go into a future that neither one of us will see that will take it to the next level. And that's exciting. Well, you've come here to increase your skill set. Let us say together, skill set. So that you can begin to expand your achievements. See, that's the difference between people who make it and people who don't make it. They don't take the time to do what you've done, to come here, invest the time and energy to develop and sharpen your skill set so you can cut through the obstacles and the stumbling blocks and the failures and the disappointments and the setbacks that will be out there waiting for you. And I can tell you, based upon my own experience, you have a power in you to overcome anything that you are confronted with. I can tell you, there's something about you that no matter what life throws at you, you will overcome it. You and I are cut from the same cloth. We're branches of the same tree. I just want to live and have peace and, and create special moments with the family. And, and 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 be able to do God's work, and I and and, and you know what I found out? People who are doing this disinformation, people who do evil in the world, as Bob Marley say, they don't take a day off. They work on Sundays too. Yes, they do. I ain't making this up. Y'all know some crazies out here. 
This is a different kind of place. So I got something for those of you that can hear me. Those of you that you're not my people, you're not my peeps, keep moving. Go do something else. Don't listen to me. I know I'm not talking to everybody because I've got a message that's for certain kinds of people who have a positive mindset or people who are open to the possibilities. No matter how bad it is or how bad it is, gets, I'm going to make it. I'm, that's who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to people who want to zone out on alcohol or drugs. No. I'm talking to someone who said, you know what, man? I've taken so many hits. I'm just tired. I understand. I'm, I've been so tired. I've been talking to squirrels. I got a squirrel friend named Tyrone. I think that, you know, Pete Rose, who was a baseball icon, said that, you know, the harder he works, the luckier he gets. And so I think that when you work, yeah. that you create things, that you are working on yourself, you do your internal work and your external work, mm. that you're going to be able to move yourself to a place to accomplish things that will literally surprise you and things that you weren't even setting out to do. There are things that I'm accomplishing and things that I'm doing that when I started out, those things, they weren't on my agenda. Yeah. But you begin to evolve to that level. That we have to be willing to fight for what we want. And people trying to turn back the hands of time, trying to uh, deny us the opportunity to vote, uh, working relentlessly to deny the ma marginalized people opportunities in an equal, unequal environment. It's a continuous fight. And so I, I want to I want to focus on something about this. This is symbolic. One, the recklessness of, of, of Putin, that there, there are people in life, short term thinking, driven by ego, that think that they can just bully and, and pounce on people and, and, and think that everybody will stand by and watch. Something that one rabbi said that I love very much. He said, when something happens, three things are going on. One, there's a perpetrator, and there are the victims, and there are the witnesses. And the question is, who's the worst? And the answer is, the witnesses. The easiest thing I've done was to get out from under the labels and to live the life that I live. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe that I can do it. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is that when you don't know what's impacting you and it's, it's something that, that's holding you down and you're not aware of it. Uh, the great anthropologist Margaret Mead was in a restaurant in London and, and a guy was serving her and said, there's several Americans here tonight. And she said, is that right? Yeah. So let me know when you serve them dessert. I'll tell you exactly how many are here. He said, oh, you couldn't possibly. And so he came back and said, okay, I've done it. And she got up and she walked around and she came back and she said, there are around 25 here. And he looked at the roster. How did you know that? Say, in America, we eat differently from you when we eat a dessert. You eat it from the crust toward the tip. We eat it from the tip toward the crust. When you eat a slice of pie, how do you eat yours? I definitely yeah, from the, the tip back to the crust for sure. Yeah, okay. And so, so there are things that when you, in, in my situation, when you live in a dominant culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self and your belief in yourself, and, and you have to learn ways in which you can begin to connect with this power that you have within yourself to handle where you are. The key is to be constantly in a perpetual process of discovering the truth of who you are and fighting constantly to look for ways in which you can escape the inner conversation. So what is that something? When you got an idea, you want to move on. You might not have the money, you might not have the education. You might not have the support or the resources you need. What is that something that can keep us going, that will enable us to act on our dream? What's one of those keys 
that will begin to help us to discover the secrets to our dream. Here's what I want you to repeat after me, please, with power and conviction. Say, it's possible. That's all I want you to do when you look at your dream. You say to yourself every day, it's possible. You say that every day to yourself, it's possible. Because what does that do? See, it begins to change your belief system. See, the way in which we operate, ladies and gentlemen, is a manifestation of what we believe, what's possible for us. Whatever you've done up to this point, all that it really is, is a duplication, it's a reproduction of what you believe subconsciously that you deserve and what's possible for your life. Most people operate out of their personal history, out of their memory, things they've done, things they've experienced, things they've seen, things that they have observed. What I'm suggesting that you operate out of a larger vision of yourself. I want you to see yourself doing what you want to do, experiencing what you want to experience, it, having what you want to have, doing what it is that gives your life some meaning and value. No, because part of delivering this message, when you're in alignment with your purpose, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that gives you more time on the universe. Let's look at me. I, that I'm 72, but I don't look it. I don't have a 72-year-old energy. And there's a difference between that, that physiological age and that spiritual age. And I think when you're in alignment and doing what you're supposed to do, that pleasures God. Yeah. I've been there. I've hit a wall. I know what it is to question yourself and ask yourself, am I crazy? Can I do this? I know what it is to doubt yourself. But I'm so glad that I stand before you as testament. And I was bathing in the sink down the hall on the 21st floor of the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan. When the janitorial staff looked at me and Larry D'Angie and my, my friend Boo, and they knew we were sleeping in the office. And I'm sure the look was, why don't they give up? Why are they wasting their time? But sure, years later when they saw me on television, I can see the puzzled expression on their faces saying, how could he go from sleeping on the floor, bathing in the sink down the hall, hiding in the closet from the janitorial staff who came in to clean the offices. How could he go from hiding in a closet to being on TV and getting a $5 million contract? And I had said to myself, Les, this has not come to stay. It's come to pass. Play something. Jerusalem, yeah, play that. See, can you bust a move with that right about now? Maybe that exercise will help to calm you down. Do some deep breathing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll help. I feel good. What's, what, 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 what are you anxious about? I don't know. I don't know. It's just so much going on. Maybe, maybe... I just shouldn't even try and peek at the television or the news. I got to put myself on a mental fast because I'm an empath. Yeah. So talk to yourself. That's that's what I did. And I feel better. And I, I had to call somebody and get a massage too. And I couldn't even get on the table. I was so anxious. I said, no, just my neck and my shoulders and my head. I'll be fine. All right? And... I started feeling better talking to myself and playing soft music and playing and lighting some lavender calen, um, candles, I'm creating a, an environment of peace. And I'm going to journal after I talk to you. I'm doing all kind of stuff, just connected with my birth family. I'm still processing that. I'm asking God, what am I to do with this? I'm 75. What am I to do with this? When you when you get outside of what's familiar, yes. what's comfortable, what feels right, and put yourself in a position beyond your comfort zone, yeah. that will give birth to a part of yourself 
that you don't know right now because in order to do something you have never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. We all have greatness within us, but greatness is not our destiny. It is a choice that we have to make consciously to put ourselves outside of our comfort zones, mm. to stretch and to develop ourselves and have in our environment people we can learn from and grow from that will hold us to a higher standard and that will always challenge us to go higher. People who stand by and do nothing. People who stand by and say nothing. And one of the great things about what's going on now in this country and around the world, that people have awakened. I, I remember the demonstrations and I found it hard worthy uh, when, when George Floyd was murdered by a, a cop and, 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 and the cops that were with the, the murderer, they, they stood back and they watched. At any point in time, they could have intervened and said, come on, you know, it's four of us and one of them, he's handcuffed, he's down, and we're on top of it. But they didn't do that because they don't recognize your humanity. When you're in a country that does not recognize your humanity, and that most certainly is in America, then that, that's a, it's a different kind of environment. When you speak that there's, a, there's an objective that you want to achieve when you speak to an audience, because how people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. So you as a speaker, when you speak in this program, when people see you, what you do is distract, dispute, and inspire. You distract people from their current story with your guests and the questions that you ask through the process of the ongoing questioning and the way in which they respond and the things they have learned. You dismantle their current belief system and inspire them to, to create a new chapter with their lives. And so, but that's an ongoing process. Of, of constantly interrupting that conversation, what psychologists call your self-explanatory style, because life is, is going to beat up on you in so many ways, and many things, they come back, you know, negative thoughts and, and how you feel about yourself, they don't die, they, they come back once you stop doing the maintenance work on your mind. Because of the fact that what we do we have the ability, we've developed over a period of time, and I don't know exactly what happens, where you can speak to a crowd of people and you're speaking to them as a group, but also individually, mm -hmm. that they come away as a result of your speaking into them. And as we weave a story with our experiences because of who we are behind the words that we speak, because of what we've gone through, a person hasn't gone through anything, it's hard for them to reach somebody's heart because they've never been there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God has to break a life before he can use a life. Mm -hmm. What you're going through, you will get through. Say that to yourself over and over and over again. Listen to something that, that gives you peace, that gives you a sense of calm. Music soothes the savage beast. Here's something else. When you are dealing with anxiety, watch something that can distract you or do something that can distract you. So uh, I've been looking for some old funny movies that I can watch and crack up. Old Richard Pryor movies. Richard Pryor, back in the day, he was a dude. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling out old Richard Pryor stuff that I can watch mm -hmm, and crack up like I'm seeing it for the first time. And I got my lavender calendars, calendar, candles play. They're lighting up and I'm gonna take a nice soothing bath, not a shower, but a bath to calm. Mm -hmm. Probably have some rose petals in the bathtub, yes. Discovering things about ourselves that we would never discover mm -hmm. in our comfort zone. And so, it, when the, I think it was Oliver Wendell Holmes, unless you attempt to do something beyond that, which you've already mastered, you will never grow. Mm -hmm. Most people don't achieve a level of mastery. Most people suffer from arrested development. Mm -hmm. They stop developing themselves, they stop growing, they stop reaching, and they literally settle in and accept life as it comes at them. I think that the people that are on, that are 
discovering how to unleash their greatness are people who have the mental resiliency yeah. and the courage to face failure that you will fail your way to greatness mm. that most people allow their fear of failure 80 percent allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed when you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. And maintaining a, a spirit of optimism and challenging yourself and learning from your mistakes. Understand that the uh, setback is a setup for a comeback. You have comeback power. As a friend of mine named Willie Jolly would say, that the things that you experience when you win, I used to be a state legislator in Columbus, Ohio. When I won a debate and got legislation passed, I won because of what I knew. When I lost a debate, I lost because of what I didn't know. Listening to motivational messages, going to seminars and workshops, spending time quietly listening to the still small voice within. Now, who am I really? Is this really me? Am I giving my best? Uh, am I just reflecting what's around me? Because all of these various things affect how we show up in life. And so having a strategy to continuously uh, find ourselves reaching higher. Robert Shuler had a book, it's not very popular, but I loved it. It's called Peak to Peak, U-P-E-A-K to P-E-E-K because you're constantly reaching higher to find out and discover your, your better self. That we're supposed to be doing this. I, I had a lady flew from Australia recently and to be trained by me and, and she, she emailed me and said, cost is not an issue. And so I asked her the second day, and I only train with people that I feel a close connection with one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I said, why did you want to come to me? She said, I'm, I saw American television and it talked about this young white boy that went into a, a black church and killed nine people. And she said, I said to myself, what if I had gotten in his ear? She says, mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. enters except through the eyes or the ears. And she mm -hmm. said, and this gave me goose pimples. She said, you speak from your heart. And I want to learn how to do that because I believe the world is the way that it is, not because a few people are violent. She said, the world is the way that it is because too many people are silent. Yes. And I said, whoa, and I decided mm, that's awesome. that my goal is, is to help people outside of politics and outside of religion, mm -hmm. which polarize people. Have a voice. Yeah, the, you yeah. know, yeah. politicians say, do as I tell you to do and I'll give you a piece of American pie. Mm -hmm. He said, focus on the outcome, not on the process. And so the way that I handle fear is I don't focus on what is it that's terrorizing me. I focus on what is it I want to accomplish, and I see myself achieving the victory. I see myself living from the dream, living from that place that I'm reaching for in my mind. Mm. Einstein said the imagination is yeah. the preview of what's to come. And so we can bypass the things that will cause us to be afraid by looking at and being focused singly on the things that we're going for. We're living in a, an incredible time that, we, that there's nothing that, that we can't do. Yeah. We're living in a time where we have, in our lifetime, seen someone go from prisoner to president of the, con of the country in South Africa, mm. Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Where President Barack Obama was raised in a single family household, an African American male became the most powerful man in the world. Yeah. So what we know is that anything's possible and we must challenge ourselves. The only reason that most of us don't accumulate a level of achievement in our lives, one, most people end up aiming low. That's what I did most of my life, that most people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail in life because they aim too low and hit. And that's what I did. I was a disc jockey. I was very satisfied. I achieved a level of, of professionalism and, and mastery in that area. And then someone challenged me and said, you can do more. And it took him 14 years to convince me to become this person that you now see. This person that you now see, this voice, which I consider my power voice, I had absolutely no idea that this person existed. But there are sometimes in life someone can take you to a place within yourself 
where you can never go by yourself. Those experiences of, of going after goals that's beyond your comfort zone and having relationships that will challenge you and surrounding yourself with coaches and mentors who can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself because you can't read the label when you're locked in the box. And so those experiences, they challenge you to go to that next level and continue to move forward in your life doing new and exciting things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you when you live a hard-centered life deciding that you're going to live a life that will outlive you.